Hello and welcome to the Craft Beer Corner. For today's beer review, we've got a really fun one today. Uh, we're jumping into a big stout from Adroit Theory. This one is called Dia de los Muertos, and this is a Russian Imperial Stout that clocks in at 14% ABV. And this one has added coffee, toasted coconut, honey-soaked macadamia nuts, and white chocolate. Uh, Adroit Theory is based in Purcellville. Now, I've had quite a few of Adroit Theory stouts over the years, indeed some of their uh, Russian Imperials as well, and I feel like I've had a version of this beer in the past. I do know that they put out different ver versions of this one, uh, but I know that I have not had the one with this laundry list of ingredients, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. A Russian Imperial stout on its own is going to be good. You add coffee, that's a win. Toasted coconut pairs beautifully, but then they go even further and add honey-soaked macadamia nuts and white chocolate on top of that. I mean, this to me just sounds absolutely incredible. So, uh, label art on this one. Um, it's got kind of a Day of the Dead looking kind of painted face on a woman on the uh, label art here. It looks quite cool. Kind of creepy, but very cool. Nice black and white, grayscale kind of thing. So, not much else to talk about there. We're going to get this cracked gently, gently. All right. Pour it right in our good old stout glass here. All right. Going to give a bit of agitation a bit quickly here just to give it a chance to form whatever head it's going to form. It does seem pretty active in terms of carbonation. I don't know how long that head is going to stick around, but going to try to form one at the beginning. All right, while well, it's forming, yeah, visually, absolutely pitch black as expected. It is a 14% Russian Imperial. I would expect it to be pitch black, and indeed it is. I can also tell you with all of these additives, it does have a very pronounced aroma. I'm a good foot and a half away from it, and I can already smell it um, as it was settling. So yeah, it is active in terms of carbonation. I can still see a pretty quick rush coming up. It did uh, already collapse the head. So the head, not that great. It is what it is. It's poured at home. If this were pulled off a nitro tap, I'm sure it, sure it would have been fantastic. But it is what it is. Let's get right up over this for a proper sniff. Oh, wow, yeah. Ooh, man. There's a lot happening in that aroma profile. So there is this underlying subtle sweetness that you can really pick up. And you can absolutely pick out the honey and the macadamia nuts quite clearly. The coffee does come through very, very clearly as well. Coconut is a little more subtle. It's there, but it's quite subtle by comparison. And there's this overarching sense of sweetness on the nose. Now, I looked at this and on the can, it says nothing about a lactose addition. So I'm assuming this is not a milk stout. This is just a big additive uh, laden kind of Russian Imperial. So that's kind of the aroma profile. And before we jump in, uh, as always, they are going to give us some pairing suggestions, so I will read about those. For food, it suggests vanilla coffee rubbed sirloin with roasted baby potatoes and molasses. Oh, I can't read quite what that word is. Uh, I really do need new glasses. I'm so sorry. The last word, it's just the, the typeface is so tiny, the font. I can't quite make it out. That's okay. Uh, cheese. Uh, they're going with uh, La Mousse Signature Houda. That's G-O-U-D-A. That is pronounced Houda. That word is Dutch. It is not Gouda. It is Houda. Um, the second uh, thing down here that I can actually properly fully read is a cigar. They suggest a Camacho uh, co Coojo Maduro. Uh, my Spanish is a bit rusty, but I think I pronounced that close. Uh, music again, they do give you a music pairing. I'm not going to go that far. Cigar, cigar, cheese, food, I get it with a beer. Um, but music is entirely subjective. So we're going to leave that off. But nonetheless, that's the pairings. It looks fantastic. It really smells amazing. And I can't wait to jump in and see how these flavors work together. So without further ado, here we go. Take one. Oh, that's a big, big beer. Very, very flavorful. So there's a lot happening here, and there's a lot happening even in the first few seconds of that flavor development. 
but I like where it started and I like where it's going. This is a big beer. It's quite complex. These flavors are very bold. They're very pungent. So uh, predominantly what you've got on the aroma does translate directly into the glass. So here's the first big takeaway. How this smelled sweet on the nose. There is that suggestion of sweetness up front, but it's not a sweet beer. Um, I, it doesn't taste like they added lactose and it tastes like it uh, was fermented fully through. So there's not residual sugars left from additive ingredients that didn't get converted into alcohol. And in a 14% ABV, you wouldn't really expect that to be the case. But you do get this suggestion, again, a sweetness up front. And that really comes from um, this uh, marked kind of honey-soaked macadamia uh, flavor that hits you up front. Uh, what happens behind that is kind of a opening up and popping in of the other ingredients behind it. So I was immediately getting coffee behind it. The toasted coconut, just like on the nose, it is a little more subtle compared to the pungency of the honey-soaked macadamia and the coffee, but it does come through. And of course, this underlying rich roasty malt bill. As soon as that coffee and that malt bill kind of come in one after the next and then really start to intensify, that's when that suggestion of sweetness really starts to dial back very, very quickly. And that underlying richness, that roastiness really starts to come through. And yes, there is a good kick of bitters coming from underneath. Um, you would kind of expect that in a Russian Imperial that also has coffee added. So it is in there. Uh, what's really kind of counterbalancing it and making it from going off the rails, kind of earthy, roasty, hugely pungently bitter, is just that prevalence of the honey-soaked honey macadamia. It's really quite nice. The coconut kind of bridges the gap between the two separate kind of flavor profiles. The honey-smoked macadamia, uh, uh, honey-soaked macadamia nuts on the one side, and then kind of the, the coffee and pairing with a malt bill on the other side. That toasted coconut kind of bridges the gap between the two and really kind of binds back and forth between both. So there's a lot of interplay of these flavors. And I gotta say, um, I don't really think that there's anything in here that's vying for attention. Some could say, okay, yeah, maybe the coconut's getting drowned out a little bit, but I don't think so. Based on uh, what I got from the aroma profile, it, it, it's about as evenly distributed in the flavor profile as I got on the nose. So I think that they put the amounts that they wanted in this beer, at least that's what it tastes like to my palate and how I perceived it to my nose as well. And it is quite well balanced and everything is accounted for and very easy to pick out. Absolutely delicious. So there is a lot happening here. I am gonna jump back in as always for a second sip. We are gonna let this re-intensify. I'll come back, I'll uh, pick apart the body and the mouthfeel, then we'll talk about this finish. But I can say my first sip, absolutely delicious. So take two. Yeah, even a little suggestion of booziness up front, then you really get that big burst of honey-soaked macadamia. It's very clear. And then actually on second sip on the re-intensification, the coconut popped out quite clearly um, behind the macadamia. And then the coffee came and then the malt bill. The malt bill pairs very well with the coffee in this beer. It's um, it's not a ridiculously intense roasty roasty. It doesn't remind me of like French Italian roast coffee bean. Just a nice full roast, maybe a medium medium dark roast, like a house blend kind of thing. And it's not over the top, but it's really nice. And it's got this natural inherent roastiness and earthiness to it and a little bit of underlying bitters, but it's not over the top. It just is a good binder, a good anchor upon which to build all these other interesting uh, flavor profiles and aroma profiles into the beer. Um, yes, the white chocolate they uh, did say was in here. It's not on the label, but it's in the brewer's description on Untap. Um, I don't get white chocolate in this at all. I didn't smell it on the nose. I'm not really picking up anything in the flavor profile that reminds me of white chocolate either. But given the macadamia and the toasted coconut, that would kind of be an easy ingredient to get muddled in the mix and just start to kind of take on uh, qualities of the other. Um, maybe the sense that I'm getting out of that is there is this inherent richness to the beer, 
but honestly that could just be coming from the beer itself so i don't want to go too down that road but from my perception i'm not really getting it the brewer says it's there i'm not really picking it up but that notwithstanding what i am getting and what they do clearly mention on the label is absolutely fantastic i gotta say i really really do like the balance on this beer i i think it's absolutely nailed spot on um sure Am I a big hop head? Am I a big uh, bitter beer fan? Do I like a big deep rut? Yes, I do. But I like all kinds of beers. And for me, for what they did with this, and especially considering it's a Russian Imperial, there are so many big, bold Russian Imperials out there that are astringently bitter, which I love. But getting something like this that really comes down to, let's take this, let's add some stuff to it, make it special. Don't let it be the norm. Um, and not that I really think Russian Imperials are a norm. They're all kind of special in their own right. But what they did with this is really, really nice. And I also think that it makes, uh, aside from my own perception of being extremely well balanced, I do sincerely believe it makes for a much more approachable beer. Um, those of us in the really pungently, astringently bitter sector are a smaller minority compared to the group at large of people that enjoy craft beer. So this is a lot more accessible. And frankly, the flavor combinations that come through in this and kind of the sensory ride is really, really nice. This is a very special beer. I think that a majority of people would really enjoy this. Even people that don't normally go for stouts because it's not so intensely roasty and the intensity of the additives come through so clearly, it really makes for a nice and very special beer drinking experience. And I absolutely love it. I am gonna take my time, sip on this one, come with my scores. When we come back, we will get this beer ranked from top to bottom. All right, now that we've gotten to enjoy this beer, we're going to get it ranked. This was Adroit Theory's Dia de los Muertos, a Russian Imperial Stout clocking in at 14% ABV. This one was aged on coffee, toasted coconut, honey-soaked macadamia nuts, and white chocolate. Adroit Theory is based in Purcellville, Virginia. So starting with the aroma on this, it was absolutely huge. It's a big 14% uh, Russian Imperial, and then they had all of this laundry list of additives that they put in there as well. It was a really big, bold, pungent aroma. You could really pick everything out quite clearly. Some aromas were a little more prominent than others, but you could pick them all out. It smelled absolutely fantastic. The aroma does get a perfect 10 out of 10. For the taste, I absolutely love this. This was a really, really interesting combination of ingredients and put all together in this base beer was absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, don't know, um, you know, how many different versions of this they have. I know there's several. I know there's some barrel aged versions, but this was certainly the most unique one that I've seen to date. And I'm really glad I got to try it. Um, really big classic. Russian Imperial, and then all of these ingredients just playing off of one another. I also like the interplay of the additives as well and kind of how the toasted coconut seemed to bridge the gap between the extremes. But I really, really enjoyed it. The taste does get a 10 out of 10. For the body, the body on this was very robust. It was very, very uh, high, certainly well above average, but it wasn't quite as heavy as I expected for 14% ABV but it only missed it by just a tick. Body gets a nine out of 10. For the mouthfeel, the mouthfeel was pretty much the same story as the body was. It had a lot of resistance, a lot of resistance. It is a 14% ABV on an RIS and indeed uh, that showed and it felt right. Um, really the only thing I could say was it wasn't quite as resistant, not quite as thick as I expected given the 14% ABV. But just as with the body, it only missed it by a tick. Mouthfeel also gets a nine out of 10. For the finish, finish on this was quite long and really um, there was no lingering intensity of bitters that was driving out the end of the finish. On this, it really came down to pungency of additives. Indeed, that was the dominant driving impetus for the length of the finish, uh, even much more so than the underlying malt bill. You don't normally get that, especially in this beer style RIS and in this ABV range, but that was the driver on this and it was nice, well above average. The finish does get an eight out of 10. The head and retention. Uh, this was the one category the beer didn't do that great. Um, it did form one kinda at the beginning. It was there for a fleeting moment, 
before just the intensity of the carbonation overtook it and it was nowhere to be found. Um, it is what it is. Pulled off of a tap at home, I'm sure it would have been better, uh, but in this case, it is well below average. Head and retention gets a two out of 10. For the appearance, the appearance on the spear was exactly as expected. Pitch black gets a perfect 10 out of 10. For the balance, the balance on this I thought was absolutely top tier. That uh, for me is still and always will be the most important category, especially if you're talking about a beer that has additives in them. The balance on this was top tier. I still got the underlying malt bill and every one of these added, in, added ingredients played its part, really came through very clearly. Balance does get a perfect 10 out of 10. Feeling the intangible subjectively, I loved it. It gets top marks for me, 10 out of 10. And finally, it's an example of the style. So the spear did uh, very well across the board, really just had a few categories where it didn't get perfect points, but the one that did drag it down was head and retention. I didn't want to bash the beer, but you know, it did kind of pull down the, the law of averages here. So I only docked one total point, but there's an asterisk. I really don't think it's that important, but I have to rate how I experience. So example of the style does get a nine out of 10, which brings the total score on Adroit Theory's Dia de los Muertos to an 87 out of 100. So well above average beer, guys. If we uh, take the fact that the head and retention only got a two, if we gave it full points there, we're tacking on another eight. This is deep into the mid 90s. This is absolutely a top tier beer. I thought it was a very excellent combination of ingredients. I have not seen in any other beers and it absolutely worked. It made for a very tasty, very unique beer drinking experience. And it was certainly one of the more approachable Russian Imperials out there. I would recommend this to any big stout fan. Folks, that's today's review. As always, I do sincerely appreciate you tuning in today. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to stay in the loop when our videos go live, just turn on your notifications, hit that bell icon. It's right next to the subscribe button. Until next time, keep it beer, keep it craft. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers.